and can access that personal relationship with God, God's self. A fresh start. Baptism for Jesus, baptism for us is a fresh start. And you don't need to come every Sunday and to be baptized again in order to have that fresh start. You can have that fresh start right here and right now just by sitting in your seat and acknowledging it within your own body and saying, you know, there are stuff in my past. There's stuff that I can, I'm working at in therapy. There's stuff that every, every third Sunday I go to the healing team and I ask for them to lay hands on me to pray for. There's stuff that is affecting who I am today. But I don't need to let that stuff determine who I am today. And I don't let, need to let those past hurts and those past damages and that, that, that woe is me mentality, that victim mentality that so many of us walk around with, we don't need to let that to govern who I am today. I've worked out in my own therapeutic journey with wonderful therapists that there's stuff in my past that I'm still working on, but I need to let the past be past and I need to let the present be present. And no longer will I be a victim to what other people have said, done, or done to me, or that I have said and done to others. Because let's be honest, I think that's sometimes the hardest thing for us to let go of is what we've done to other people rather than what others have done to us. And I don't need to let that govern who I am. We need to, as the saying says, let go and let God. We need to let go of that stuff. Because I don't know about you, we're on this planet for a very short length of time. And you know, I want to make the very best of the time that I've got left for me. Who knows what's going to happen when I leave this church this morning? It's a crazy world out there. And I'd rather go to my Savior, my Sovereign, knowing that I lived in the moment, in the now, today, in this moment, rather than going to God and God saying to me, what did you do today? Well, I lamented about what I did yesterday. I'm still worrying about what I did when I was a two-year-old and I fought with my brother and sister. I'm still worried about my family who didn't accept me when I came out. I'm still concerned about you fill in the blank. Because each and every one of us has stuff in our past. Not one of us is immune to the hurt and damage of this world. And it happens to every single one of us. But we get the choice this morning. That's what the, the benefit of Scripture is, that we get to choose this morning. And you know what a choice means? You get to choose yes or no. <laughs> you know, I don't believe in lukewarm Christians. <laughs> Although many of us try to live that way. But you know, I think that God expects us to be on fire and to be those people who really want to have a passion for life and a passion for what we believe. I love the amens this morning. <laughs> Woo, girls! <laughs> God, I haven't seen a hanky waved in church for quite some time. Thank you, Rev. Pamela. <laughs> you know, we get to choose, and the choice is yours. Do you want a fresh start today? Do you want to make today a new day? Do you want to stop the pain from the past? Do you want to stop all the rhetoric that has stopped you from believing that you can have a fresh start? Well, the choice is yours. The invitation is for you. The invitation is to say, you can say yes right now. Whatever's gone on. I had two conversations this week which helped me to focus about what it is that God wanted me to say this week. Mm. And one of those folks are in the congregation this morning, and so I don't want to embarrass them. One of them was in the congregation at nine o'clock this morning. And those two conversations helped me to remind myself to be in the now and not to be in the yesterday, and not to be in tomorrow. Because you know what? I don't know what tomorrow's gonna look like. But I know what now looks like. And now I can take some control over. Two conversations. One of those conversations was on Thursday. Um, many of the staff and I got together. Not everybody was able to be there, but most of us were. And we went out to lunch on Thursday. And it was our Christmas lunch. You know, we work over Christmas, just in case anyone knew it. <laughs> it was a busy time for us. And so uh, some of us were able to get together. And um, unfortunately, Jane wasn't able to join us. And I'm sorry about that, Jane. But I'll take you to lunch one other day. Just you and me. (laughs) 
It's okay, Pamela, trust me. <laughs> and I think Carlos trusts me too. <laughs> Thursday, about uh, quarter to 12, we were just getting ready to leave and all the staff had gathered in the office and the phone rang and there was, you know, we were kind of relaxing, getting ourselves into that party mood, if you will, for at least an hour and a half. And the phone rang and Keith Minor answered the phone and he said, somebody really needs to talk to you. And so I was in the main office and so I took the call right there and there was a bit of fun and chatter going on, but I think the atmosphere shifted for a moment. And there was a, a gentleman of our congregation who uh, comes to the nine o'clock service. And he called me and he said, you know, I made it a New Year's resolution that I wanted to work on my own spirituality and started to attend church on Christmas Eve. He said, and I really like what your church is doing, he said, but, you know, I've got, I've got some issues in my life, he said, and then yesterday, today I received a phone call. It was from a place outside of Los Angeles, and it was his um, nephew, 23-year-old had come out to his parents and his parents didn't accept it. And a week ago he called him and he said, he treats him more like a brother than a, a, a nephew and he said, you know, he said, just, I don't know when the pain hurts, when the pain stops. When, do, when does people stop picking on me? When will people stop calling me names? Sissy boy, faggot. When does, when does it stop? You see, his, his uncle's gay and a bit older than him, and so he was asking his uncle, when does it stop? When does it stop? When do we stop being victimized? And the young man decided it was time for it to stop. And so he took his own life. And his uncle was calling me because he wanted to make sense of this. He didn't understand you know, what, what, what's all this about. And at that very moment, the young man was being cremated. The family had decided that he couldn't have a Christian burial because he'd committed suicide and he was a gay, gay son. And so I took five minutes on the phone, 10 minutes, actually it was more like 15, just sitting there and praying with this young man who was trying to find his way back to God. But this incident had just happened in his life that was causing a block and he didn't know how to get past it. I invited him to live in the present. And I invited him to make this 23 year old's life count for something. You see, I'm not one of those Christian ministers that believe that just because this young man took his own life that he doesn't get to heaven. You see, I believe in God's grace. And I believe that God covers the sins of this world and the sins of this world were not necessarily him but what was done to him and that this young man was now in glory with God. And I celebrate him this morning because I truly believe that he joins the cloud of witness that surround us in this church this morning. And at nine o'clock, we dedicated communion to the memory of this 23-year-old boy because you see, it reminded me that I need to make a fresh start of my life and I can't live in the past with all of the pain and all the people who've called me names and all of the things that people say about me. Because you know, the thing that I've realized is just because they say it doesn't make it true. Just because they call me a sissy boy. <laughs> doesn't make it true. <laughs> the second conversation I had was with another young man who's in our congregation this morning. And so I'm not going to embarrass him, but I'll just give you the broad strokes of our conversation. And the broad strokes of our conversation was that he really wanted to make something of his life. But that there was stuff in his past that he just couldn't get past. There was stuff going on that he just didn't want to be able to, didn't know how to move on. And that living sometimes in that past was preventing him from becoming the full adult that he truly is today.